All right, guys, today I am reviewing this phone right here, the Motorola G7 Power. Actually, the phone isn't in here. The phone is in my pocket. That was a real crash, but I'm Noah from Anything Cameras, the channel that focuses on helping you improve your filming and photography. And like I said, I'm reviewing this phone that I got recently, the Moto G7 Power. This is part of their G7 line, but it's actually, specs-wise, a little worse, and price-wise, a bit cheaper, but you get a much better battery at that price. So let me start by telling you some specifications and all that nonsense, and then we'll get into actually how the phone handles and how it is to use. Okay, hopefully you don't mind if I read them off my G7 power. I don't have them memorized. This phone has a 6.2 inch screen at 720p resolution, 17.9 aspect ratio. Its rear camera is 12 megapixels. Its front camera is eight. The processor is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 octa-core at 1,800 megahertz. Its storage is 32 gigabytes, but it does accept an S micro SD card. And its battery is 5,000 milliamp hours. The screen is an IPS LCD. The camera's aperture size goes down to f2.0. It does record 4K UHD video and it weighs 6.98 ounces. And I mentioned the processor, but I forgot to mention that it has three gigabytes of RAM. So not the most impressive specifications, but especially if you're upgrading from an older phone, you're not gonna notice any performance issues unless you're trying to do some really heavy gaming of some type. I know I don't do any of that, so it's fine for my use and probably will be for yours as well. The biggest selling point of this phone is the battery. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery that lasts for 27 days when the phone is on and not being used at all. That's at least what the company says. However, I have no doubt that it would last at least a week. I only need to ch charge this phone at night and sometimes I don't even need to charge it for two days if I use it lightly. The build quality is decent. However, it is only a hard plastic, so you will definitely want to pick up a case. It's big and feels pretty nice in the hands, and the screen is scratch resistant, so pick up a protector if you're worried about breaking it. However, you won't need to worry about scratches. Before I continue on with this review though, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button for more videos like this. For such a big phone, the, it does feel rather lightweight and the ergonomics of the fingerprint sensor on the back uh, is very handy. I find it much easier than using a home button like on the older iPhones. Speaking of home buttons, this does not have a physical one. It is a digital one like many Android devices. And in case you weren't aware, this is an Android phone, which is much better than Apple. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments for that, but whatever, it's true. The price of this phone is only 240 US dollars. The phone uses a USB type C for charging, and it also has an aux port on the top. I do wish they put the auxiliary port on the bottom though, because when it's in my pocket, if I'm listening to music with earbuds, and I pull it out, if it were in the bottom, meaning the bottom would face up, then my hand grabs it so that I can turn it right up rise and use the fingerprint sensor to unlock it. However, since it's on the top, it needs to go into my pocket with the top up, but then I grab it and turn my hand like I'm taking it out of my pocket and it's upside down. The fingerprint sensor is down here. Speaking of the fingerprint sensor, I'm actually very impressed by it. However, that is from an upgrade of an iPhone 6 um, and it's very snappy, very responsive. I had to sometimes try several times with the iPhone 6 and it just was not a pleasant experience. I'm a photographer, so naturally I'm going to notice the camera quality. And it's 12 megapixels, the back camera at least, but it's pretty crappy. They over sharpen the image a ton to the point where it just looks like trash. I can give you an example image here. So what I did is I downloaded a manual camera app. This is free. It just is called manual camera, I believe. And it still doesn't look great. It actually still looks kind of sharpened, uh, even though they give you a raw format. 
You can either shoot raw plus JPEG or JPEG with this app. And I'm just going to take a photo right now. So here's an example of the raw photo of Leaf. And as you can see, it doesn't look that great. And we even have studio lights in here, so he's not that dim. Overall, for a $240 phone, I'm really impressed by its performance and its quality, and especially its battery. That was really the reason I went with it, and I do not regret my decision. If a better camera is something that is really important to you, you'd probably be better off going with something like a Google Pixel. However, keep in mind that they don't accept micro SD cards like this phone does, meaning you're gonna have limited storage. There are pros and cons to each, and it's up to you which phone is gonna fit your needs better.